Hey, I'm Leif and I started the vegan gym in 2017. I am just coming up to my 10 year vegan anniversary in May and I wanna take my health and fitness to the next level. My goal is to prove to everyone that you can be super healthy and fit as a vegan and I wanna share my entire health and fitness journey and do that fully transparently with tons of data and information. So I'm gonna be sharing my blood tests, my body composition tests, and also showing you exactly what I eat and how I train to accomplish my fitness goals. I wanna share all the highs and lows and everything in between. I'm super excited to share this series with you. Let's dive in to episode one. I think it's easy to look at people who are relatively fit and think, oh, it must be easy for them to, to train. Most days when I go into the gym, I don't wanna be there. And I have to keep pushing myself through that workout. So my overarching goal within health and fitness is to be as healthy and fit as possible. And one form of kind of general training that really inspires me and speaks to me is what is called hybrid athleticism. You're able to run a marathon. You're able to swim across a lake. You're able to deadlift a bunch of weight. You're able to complete an Ironman triathlon, complete a Spartan race. You're able to do everything. And that just really speaks to my kind of fundamental belief about what being an athlete really means. So one kind of ultimate fitness challenge that I've known about for a few years and would love to be able to personally accomplish is doing a 500 pound deadlift and running a mile in five minutes. And you would do both of those, both the deadlift and the mile within five minutes. So it would be, you got 500 pounds on a bar, you're at the start line of a mile and it's gonna be ready, set, go. Start a timer, you pull the deadlift. Hopefully that takes you like uh, a few seconds and then you jump right into the run and you, you run a mile. It's one thing to be able to do either one of those. It's another thing to be able to do both of those. And it's another thing entirely to be able to do both of those back to back in five minutes. Probably an all out mile for me right now would probably be just over six minutes. And then my max deadlift that I that I pulled, um, this was also a few months ago, was uh, I actually pulled 455, which I was really surprised about. Sometimes they're like just all the stars align with your with a, a particular workout and uh, everything must have gone perfect because I was able to pull that weight and I thought that um, I was probably around 410 or something for for my uh, one rep max currently. I have not planned a date for this uh, challenge. And if I'm being totally honest, it scares the heck out of me because that's that's a an extremely difficult goal. I'm not at my peak strength or body composition right now, which is why I'm starting with a bulking period. And then after that, I wanna shred off some of the excess body fat that I'll be adding through this bulking phase. And then I want to shift gears a little bit and focus on my endurance training. So I'm not expecting any kind of crazy transformation with my health or my fitness. That's not really the point. What I mostly wanna show is I am now 10 years into my vegan journey. Here is all of my health data. Here are all of my fitness accomplishments. Here's what my body looks like. Here's my strength. Here's all of it. This is possible. I think you can get phenomenal results in four 30 minute workouts a week. That's one of the best reasons for getting a coach in the first place is to help cut that learning curve and instantly identify how should I train and eat to accomplish my goals as quickly as possible. Hi, my name is Daniel Lawrence. I've been vegan for around three, maybe four years. One of the things that I'm very proud of is just that journey that I've gone through. It sounds pretty selfish, but I am proud of that journey that I've taken um, because I was in a very, very deep depressive state. And I see that sometimes in my clients and I know they can make that change, but I know it's a very hard change to make. Our coaching is gonna look a little bit different than it normally does for clients who go through our Vegan Superhero Academy program. Would you explain to our viewers what I can expect from this journey and what working together is gonna look like? 
Right. So obviously it's going to encompass the basics. So training protocol, nutrition protocol, and then this was going to be a great feedback system. So looking at your form, looking that we are taking great care of form, but also that we're taking sets hard enough, um, taking sets to the appropriate RPE, because that's pretty, pretty important for a resistance training protocol. Then we also have frequent check-ins. I know that you quote unquote know uh, pretty much as much as, as, as anyone should be able to know about training and the fitness but there is still going to be a great check-in protocol between you and I, just to make sure that you aren't overextending that speed subject, that we keep you on your toes per se. And then we'll also be focusing on potentially making changes in the future as your body adapts, whether or not that will be adding different kind of loading protocols, whether that be adding different types of volume approaches, whether that be changing specific exercises based on how you progress. And the same can be said for your nutrition, of course. And that's pretty much the same that we do with the clients is that it is ever changing based on your results. What do you think about kind of a 10 pound goal as the, as the weight increase? I think that's very reasonable. I think that sometimes focusing on a weight can sometimes be negative because we're so focused. Oh, I need to gain that weight. And sometimes we do that to a detriment of our own selves. So we'll keep a close eye on body composition, et cetera. But 10 pounds is the goal. We're going to aim for that, but we're not going to try and reach a goal to the detriment of our own health and to our own overall goal. But 10 pounds over three months, definitely, definitely a solid goal if we work hard. When it comes to kind of my overarching goals, what I really want to prove to people is that it's possible to be super healthy and fit on a vegan diet. When it comes to like my specific fitness goals, like the ability to go out and complete an Ironman triathlon and then also be able to deadlift 500 pounds, be able to see my abs, really have like holistic health and fitness. So not that I would necessarily be the best at any one discipline within fitness, but I can do everything and do it at a pretty decent level. So I'd love to just hear your thoughts about that overarching goal and how you see this bulking period fitting into that. Absolutely. I think it's a very great goal. I think one of my clients coined it the best looking person to survive the end of the world. That was their, that was their <laughs> goal. They just, they oh, just yeah, I like that. <laughs> they just want to survive the end of the world and look incredibly jack while doing so. Yeah. I was like, wow, that sounds that sounds like Dwayne The Rock Johnson in pretty much any movie he's going to play. Uh, but yeah, I think that's, that's a really, really, a really good goal. The one thing that I do want to draw attention to, and, and it's certainly something that we're going to do in this muscle gaining phase, You've made the distinct decision to go after one thing at a time and then trust yourself to have everything come together at the end. I think sometimes individuals, perhaps in the beginning of their journey, try to attack everything at once. That's not necessarily a bad idea, but it's perhaps not the best idea. If you're trying to stay as lean as you possibly can while gaining muscle mass, you're going to suffer by not achieving that. You're making the conscious decision now to gain muscle mass. That's your only goal for the next three months. That's fantastic because we can remove the fat mass after and we won't lose any muscle mass. Granted, we keep our protein high, we get adequate rest and we keep training stimulation at a good place. Yeah, it makes sense. Historically, I've spent a lot of time in the kind of four to six rep range, maybe five to seven rep range. Yeah, I'd be interested to see how my body responds to some higher some higher rep ranges. Late for my when is the first day? Um, I want to talk about that. Um, I woke up and I'm not feeling a hundred percent right now. So I yeah. I think um potentially bumping it a few days. We have to play it by ear then. We have to play it by ear. I wouldn't want you to stop unless you're full hundred percent because if you do then get either injured or more sick, then screw it. Yeah, that's not helpful. Knowing your health metrics is really valuable. Investing your time and money in understanding how your metrics are tracking over time, whether it's getting blood tests or it's getting a VO2 max test. I'm really excited to just continue tracking all of my metrics over time and understanding how my body is changing in response to certain stimuli. I'm here with Tommy and uh, we're at the Sports Speed Lab and I'm gonna be getting my RMR testing done and then I'm also gonna be doing a VO2 max test. So those are two good baseline measurements for kind of understanding what your 
aerobic capacity is and, and uh, how many calories you're burning on a daily basis. So, yep. Now you'll just breathe, breathe normally. So that'll probably be about 15 minutes or so. So what we're doing here is breathing through this mouthpiece into this tube. The tube goes into a gas analyzer. The gas analyzer is looking at how much oxygen and carbon dioxide are in the exhaled air. Now we're monitoring how much is exhaled. From that, you can determine uh, carbohydrate and fat utilization and consequently how many calories are being burned. Dries out your uh, mouth quite a bit actually. It's weird. 2,257 calories per day. This is our right. mark. That's, okay. what you, that's what you burn just being alive. It's like 2,900 calories for maintenance. I'm starting to bulk right now. Yeah. That's, the, uh, that's the next goal. Yeah, I'm at about 3,400 calories right now. Okay. So. Yep. That sounds good. All right, so now we'll move over to the treadmill. I'll get Let's all do this it. moved over. Now I have to actually work. Yes. <laughs> so I'm controlling the speed, so all you have to do is run. Go as long as you can. It's up to you when, when the test stops. Okay, cool. We'll look at how his fat and carbohydrate utilization changes as his heart rate increases, as the intensity increases. Good job. That incline at the end always gets yeah. everybody. <laughs> yeah, it does. VO2 max is 45.9. Fitness level, that puts you in this excellent category for your age range. I mean, 46 isn't bad, but... There's on, lots of room for improvement. Right, on, on the, you know, the front of the pack, athletes are gonna be closer to 60. Mm -hmm. And then fat and carbohydrate utilization, so, and this is something I noticed immediately during the test. You move from burning mostly fat to burning mostly carbohydrate very quickly at a very low heart rate. Reasons for that could be a lack of endurance training. So a lack of a lot of, you know, zone two, really easy, yeah. slow run, slow cycling. Uh, that's what develops. Um, yeah, I noticed even for the walking in the beginning, my heart rate was at 100. And I was thinking, yeah, well, that's not too good. If I had kind of one primary fitness goal, I would say it's becoming a hybrid athlete. So an athlete that can go out and lift heavy weights and have like the body composition I want to have and then also be able to go out and do an Ironman. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts about kind of blending all of those disciplines together? Yeah, um, so yes, you can absolutely be a strong athlete and be an endurance athlete. You need several days of endurance work, which would be low zone two training and then some high intensity work so zone five and that can be running or cycling or it could be rowing it can be you know however you want to get your intensity it can be swimming for some people yeah just really hard swimming 80 to 90 percent of your training time is zone two the other 10 to 20 percent is zone five you have either really easy stuff or really hard stuff hmm. and you yeah. don't just sit in the middle but over time, you'll see your speed or your pace mm -hmm. increase at a lower heart rate. Yeah. So if I, if I can increase your speed at a lower heart rate, then that means your speed at the higher heart rate is, is also gone up. Yeah. Cool. Well, Tommy, thank you so much for your All time. Right. Really appreciate it. Yep. Arrived. This one is? I guess so. <laughs> hey, what's up, man? Hi, I'm Leif. Oh, that's right, okay. Yeah. All right, I'll be right there with you. Okay. Sorry I'm a few minutes okay. late. It took me to the wrong spot. Oh, uh, no, man, you're good. Yeah. Um, I'm filming a uh, YouTube video for a fitness journey. Would right. you mind if we take a few shots of this? Or? Okay. Oh, yeah, go awesome. for it. All right, thank you. All good. So it's really important to track your health and fitness journey with data, and a DEXA scan is really the best way that you can track your body composition over time.
Have a great day. All right, got the scam results. Let's see where we're at. All right, so the main numbers that I'm looking at here are the total body fat percentage. So that is 13.5% right now. And I'm also looking at the lean tissue, 151.1 pounds. And that's highly correlated with the amount of lean muscle that I have. So the red areas are my lean mass and then the purple or bluish areas are my body fat mass. And my fat tissue is 24.8 pounds. My bone mineral content is 7.5. Estimates my visceral adipose tissue, which is a specific type of fat that's associated with several metabolic diseases, such as obesity, type 2 diabetes, etc., is 0 0.07 pounds. So pretty much no visceral adipose tissue, which is a very good thing. All right, so I'm happy with these results and looking forward to seeing how we can change this over time. So my body fat will be increasing through this journey. And that is something that is just going to happen when you bulk because to optimally build lean muscle, you need to be in a caloric surplus. And being in a caloric surplus by definition means that you're gonna be eating more calories than your body needs, which means you are going to be gaining some body fat along the way. That's perfectly normal, very healthy. And the focus is to make sure that we're building as much lean muscle as possible through that process. Part of what I wanna show through this journey is that it is possible to transform your body in whatever way you want. And I'm gonna show you the principles that I'm applying through this journey to accomplish that. So I'm feeling good about the starting point and I'm feeling really confident that we're gonna be able to complete a successful lean bulking period. So let's do it. All right, time for my before weigh-in. Gonna step on the scale, see where we're at. 181.2 is where we're clocking in. One really great way of tracking your body progress over time is taking measurements. So I'm gonna be taking measurements of a few different parts of my body, and then we're gonna compare that over time. And this is a really kind of good proxy for understanding muscle growth in specific areas of your body. All right, 32 on the button. All right, but I actually can't read it. 14 and a half. 49.5. 41 here. 15.5. 15.25. It's kind of weird, but my left side is stronger and bigger than my right side, even though I'm right hand, right handed. 12.1, 12.2. Let's go 37.6. 24.1. Yeah, this is where you see a big difference between my right and left side. Only three inches, got yeah, a solid inch more on the left. Another important comment for your limbs, you're going to flex those. Actually, you're gonna flex for all these measurements, but the limbs are gonna make the largest difference. 15 on this side, 15.05. So in August of 2013, at the age of 21, I was diagnosed with a rare form of cancer. We did a biopsy on on this, uh, what we thought was a cyst, calls me back into the office and he says, um, I've got uh, got some hard news for you. This is a, a really rare form of cancer uh, known as Langerhans cell histiocytosis. I remember walking out of his office in the parking lot and just like feeling kind of lost. And um, I actually took me a little bit to even find my car because I was, uh, not kind of in a in a normal headspace. So that uh, the next few months were were really challenging. If I said I do not care what I need to do moving forward, I will do whatever it takes to never experience that again. Through that process, it taught me the importance of having your health, and I realized that if you don't have your health, you don't have anything. So I started doing a lot of research into preventative lifestyle medicine and trying to understand how do I heal my body from the inside? How do I create an environment of health that is going to allow me to live a long, prosperous life? That's what brought me down the path of plant-based nutrition. And then I started 
kind of uncovering the ethical side of my dietary choices as well. It actually didn't take me very long, maybe just a few years for me to, to look back on that uh, cancer diagnosis and authentically say that was the best thing that's ever happened to me. I'm a really big believer that a 100% plant-based diet is the healthiest diet that you can possibly follow. And it is also the most compassionate lifestyle for the animals and our planet. So why not go through and check all of those boxes? Your body is capable of whatever you want to accomplish. So the biggest fears that I had to overcome in the gym would have mostly happened at the very beginning of my fitness journey. When I was this scrawny runner who was getting into the gym for the first time, I truly did not believe that it was possible for me to transform my body at least certainly not to the extent that I have transformed my body. So it's not a straight line, it's a zigzag. Just really just like anything in your, your fitness journey. And even day to day, my body weight, even though I'm gonna be doing everything properly, my body weight is not gonna just be like linearly perfectly increasing. That's not how things work. Your body fluctuates its water levels. Same thing happens when you are working to lose body fat as well. I mean, I'm not immune to, to looking at the scale and thinking, oh man, the scale just dropped by half a pound. I did everything right yesterday. I'm trying to build muscle. Why isn't this happening faster? I've been doing this for 15 years and I'm not immune to those feelings. I think a big reason to have a coach is not for when times are going really well, but it's for when you are confronting challenges and when you are facing struggles. Ho hopefully I'm 100% the next two days. We have to play by ear then. All right, yeah, I, th I think playing by ear at this point is the right move. All right, heading to the gym. I'm gonna just hit uh, arms and shoulders today. I'm not feeling 100%. Usually if I'm not feeling well at all, I'm just not gonna train, period. It's just really uncomfortable and not actually productive. Your best approach is just getting back to health as quickly as possible, but I'm feeling good enough that a little arm and shoulder workout makes sense. So that first workout was meant to be a film workout for us to get some workout footage. I wasn't feeling my best and I thought that I was gonna feel worse the next day, but I actually didn't feel worse. I just kind of felt the same, wasn't feeling great. But I told myself, you know what? The timing is never gonna be perfect to start your health and fitness journey. And if you're waiting for the perfect time, you're never gonna get started. So we're calling that day number one. We're getting started in this bulking journey and I'm super excited to share the rest of this journey with you. We're now a few weeks in and I am really surprised so far with the results that we've had. So looking forward to sharing all of that with you as well as some of the challenges that I've been going through. I can't wait to see you in episode number two.